Now that we have our project created, let's take a look around at the editor. If your editor doesn't look like mine, it's okay. Just go to Window, choose Layouts, and choose Default. This should give you this default layout where you've got an hierarchy area or a hierarchy area on the left, a scene view in the middle with a little game tab up there, an inspector to the right, and on the bottom, a project and a console window. Now let's talk through what all of these different sections are and go into some depth so that you feel a little bit more comfortable. If you're already totally comfortable with the editor, feel free to skip this part. But if you're new to the editor at all or you just haven't seen this version, I'd recommend you just hang on for a moment and let me show you a couple of quick things. First off, we've got the scene view. The scene view shows us everything that's in our current level. The hierarchy here also shows that, although by default the Unity editor when you open up a new project for some reason collapses everything in there underneath the name of the scene. Right now we've got our sample scene open. If you don't have that open, we'll talk about how to open it in a moment, but let's hit the arrow to expand it. And you'll see that there are two objects in our scene. We have a main camera. I can select it and a bunch of things just changed. And I have a global light. I select it and it looks a little bit different. If you don't see this sample scene, that's okay. We'll come back to this in a moment. Let me show you how to open it. Down here on the bottom, we have the project window. There's a project and a console tab. If it looks like this, just click over to the project window. Underneath the project window, you should see assets and packages. There's also a favorite section up there. Go to the assets section and then click on it and then choose scenes, double click on it and you should see your sample scene in here. Just double click on it and it should open up the scene. It might ask you if you wanna save the empty scene that you're in, you could just hit no. So once we have this sample scene open, let's look at it again and talk through some of these objects here. On the left, we've got our main camera in the hierarchy and our global light. If I select the camera, you'll see that the inspector here on the right shows a whole bunch of somewhat interesting things. It shows a transform, which may or may not be confusing to you, with some positional information. It's got a position with an X, a Y, and a Z. We're going to talk a lot about that later. A rotation and a scale. We don't really need to talk too much about the transform, though, so I'm going to collapse it by clicking the arrow. Then I'm going to talk about the camera here. This is the next component on our main camera game object. We'll talk a lot about game objects throughout this course. This camera here has a couple of settings on it. First, you'll see that it's set to orthographic here under the projection section. This is because we're building a 2D game. The other option for this is perspective. So if you're wondering how to get things into a 3D view, perspective mode is usually the way that we're going to want to go. We'll talk a lot more about camera modes later, though. I don't want to go too deep into it. just want to show some of the option stuff here. The other option that I want to show is under the environment section. Our background type right now is set to solid color and our background color is set to blue. Right here you can see a preview of our main camera is showing blue. And if I go over to the game view here, you see that all we see is a nice big blue screen. Now if I change the background color by clicking on the color and then choosing a new tone or new color, and go all the way to white, all the way to blue, go over to like a green or something else, I can totally change what my background is looking like. We can also add in images and we're going to do all that, but background color is an important thing to understand and know about while we're learning about the inspector. Now, let's undo this change. I don't want to have a green background in my game. It's kind of blinding me right now. So to undo it, I'm going to hold control or command if you're on a Mac and hit Z. That's the universal undo button and control or command Y is the redo button. I don't want to do that though. So I'll control Z again and remove that color change. Now that we've got all of the different parts of the Unity editor talked about, let's kind of dive back into the hierarchy for just a moment. In the hierarchy, we've got multiple objects and I can select between them. And remember that the inspector is changing which object is, or showing which object is selected, showing the selected one. If I hold shift, and I hit the up arrow here, I can actually select both of them, or I can click on one and hold control and select multiple. And you'll see that over here on the right, it looks a little bit different. It has a transform section, but here it says components that are only on some of the selected objects cannot be multi-edited. So that means that because both of these objects have a transform component up at the top, that part can be edited together. I can multi-select them and edit it. I could modify the scale or the rotation or something, but because they don't both have a camera, I can't multi-select and modify the camera or multi-select and modify the light because only one of them has a light. So that's pretty much the core of the editor or the core of the 
areas that you need to know about. There's one other section that I want to show you, though, that you might get stuck with and might run into a problem with in the future, and I think it's important to call out right away. Well, two of them, actually. First, there's a lock button up here. Say I've selected my global light and I accidentally clicked this lock, and I go over to work on my main camera, notice that the lock button has kept it from changing. It's actually changed or selected and locked onto this global light. This window can't change to my newly selected object. If I hit the lock again, it'll unlock, and then I can now select objects and have them show up in the inspector. This is very useful sometimes, but it's easy to get it mixed up and accidentally leave it on that mode. Another issue that I see people run into often is right here on the triple dots. Let's see if we can drag this over just a little bit. There's a debug option. So if you choose this debug option, things suddenly look really weird. There's lots of extra text here, and you're seeing things strange. This comes in handy later. We'll talk about how and when you can use this later. But if you ever see yourself kind of stuck in that mode, remember you can just go back here and choose normal. Choose the three dots, go back to normal, and you're good. And then the last thing is just remember that you can always go to window, layouts, and default to get back to a normal default layout and kind of match what you're seeing with my setup.